for the next few weeks, let's talk about Genesis. Each week, let's read a section of Genesis three times. Once for understanding, once for devotion, and once to seek an opportunity for outward service. Uh, some way that we become a doer of the Word, not just a hearer of the Word. So we're going to start with Genesis 1, all the way to chapter 2, verse 3. Each week what I'll do is I'll comment on the text uh, that we read in Genesis, so you'll have some background, so you can understand it better. I'll be your study Bible, so to speak, in case you don't have one. Um, Genesis 1, who wrote this? When was it written? Uh, Genesis doesn't say. And scholars speculate. Some say, oh, this is an ancient record of the creation, written 3,000 years B.C. in Mesopotamia. Others say Moses. And then others say those early stories, they were myths. Others say they were fiction, written, composed around 200 to 500 B.C. So it's all over the map. Uh, you have some who say every word is literal, pure, scientific fact. And others say it's the best science they had at that time. So the Hebrews wrote down the only stories they had from their culture about creation. Well, after we've talked about this, just briefly, I wonder what you think. Perhaps you have many questions. Call me, Alabama. The, uh, you can call me uh, with your questions. Uh, you may have looked at the study Bible and you, you, you wonder, what, what does all this say about evolution? Uh, was there really a flood that covered the earth? Was there a garden with a talking snake and magic trees? Uh, if the Bible's wrong, what about everything else? Every week we'll dabble in some of these issues. But no matter where you're being led in your thinking, in this study, the undeniable and inspired truth without error is that there is a God, a vastly superior but personal loving creator who created from nothing the heavens, the earth. Well, that's enough for this week. I'd be interested in knowing what you think about how we ought to understand the early stories of prehistory in Genesis 1. For that matter, Genesis 1 through 11, everything that comes before Abraham. So next, we're going to stop analyzing. Uh, we're going to stop using our brain. We're going to shift gears. We're going to read it again. This time, don't analyze, just experience it. As you read it that second time, uh, here's, what, uh, here's what I did. I imagine myself being there on the scene. What am I seeing? What are the details? How am I feeling? Imagine all the details 14 billion years ago when God began to create the heavens and the earth. When I think of chapter 1, I think of when there was nothing, then out of nothing, an explosion. Must have been a really big bang creating reality itself, the dimensions of time and matter. It must have been awesome to see the stars born over billions of years, worlds pulled together out of the cosmic dust, planets moving from chaos to stability, the earth barren, then volcanoes and molten lava move, moving from fearsome and dangerous and inhospitable to hospitable over millions of years, hospitable, life-sustaining environments. I'm there, I'm watching it. It's awesome to be there as I read it. Then I see it all. Those giraffes are awesome. Whales are awesome. Light is awesome. Volcanoes are awesome. Flowers are awesome. Sitting on the beach for hours of peace just watching the tide move in and out. It's awesome. Hummingbirds, fascinating. Hurricanes, powerful, wondrous. Summer rains, joyful. I want you to all be created. Music, uplifting, campfires, mesmerizing. And God said, what did God say? Oh, 
It was good. <laughs> but the greatest miracle of all is that you and I are even here in this. God chose us to be here. Life is good. God said, let Bruce be, and he was. God said, make Bruce a sweet potato, and it was. It was, it was good. So good that God took a day off to enjoy it and rest. Behold the wonder. Psalm 8, the heavens declare the glory of God. They are his handiwork. Wow. Genesis reminds me of who I am, why I'm here, what I mean, why I am alive, what is my purpose, how I am related to God, where I am going, and how beautiful, how precious, how holy, how good everything and everybody is. I understand better Jesus in Matthew 6. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to life? It makes me want to pray. My Father, God, God of the cosmos, God of all time, God of all eternity, God of glory, God of grace, thank you. And thank you again, and thank you, and praise you. How can I, the third time I read through this, I'm going to ask, how can I apply this, or internalize this, uh, or capture this in a jar, so that I become a doer of the word, and not just a hearer? Well, I think I'm going to be more thankful. I uh, just gave it a few moments of reflection. I think I'm going to be more thankful for every moment of my life. This is such a precious gift to be here. And at this time in the history of the world, for just being here, be more thankful for everything and for everyone. How, how can I do this? How can I do this in tangible ways? Perhaps you can help me. Uh, perhaps you can make a list of suggestions. I know one thing, I want to pray, Lord, God, and Creator, too wondrous to imagine and too tender to imagine. It is my brother and Lord Jesus who knows you as Father, so I ask that you would sweep me up in the safety of your fatherly arms. Amen.